Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott Williams. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Johns Hopkins University. It's a pl privilege to be here with you tonight, which is apparently part of the science block. And I will be talking about algae, the next biofuel. Uh, my talk is presented for all with a Creative Commons license. By 2050, global energy demand will exceed 150,000 billion kilowatt hours. And the question is, what energy source could possibly meet such a demand? And if you didn't figure it out from the title of the talk, spoiler alert, the answer is algae. Think about this. All the petroleum we drill from the ground comes from prehistoric oceans that were once filled with algae. Algae are fantastic at concentrating the sun's energy down into liquid fuels. All we need to do is optimize that process, hopefully in less than 100 million years. Fossil fuels, not sustainable. They're in limited supply, they pollute the air and water, they change the climate, we spend 700 billion importing them, and they cause skirmishes like Iraq and messes like the Deepwater Horizon. One solution is biofuels. We currently turn a lot of corn into ethanol and soy into biodiesel. These are renewable resources, they're carbon neutral, they're domestic, and they can be blended with petroleum fuels right in your tank to ease the transition. But first generation biofuels are not perfect. The energy returns are pretty modest. It takes a gallon of fuel to make 1.2 gallons of corn ethanol. Soy biodiesel is a little bit better than that, but both of them still inherently lead to a conflict between food and fuel. Algae biofuels are second generation. For the most part, algae is not a food, at least not directly. Algae can be grown on non-arable, non-farmlands, like the desert shown here in the picture. And algae have a remarkably high yield of oil per acre, 100 times higher than soy biodiesel. And when I say algae, I bet a lot of you think of seaweed. A biologist would call that macroalgae, but I'm talking about tiny, microscopic, single-celled algae, five microns across, so 20 of them would fit across a single human hair. There are literally thousands of species of microalgae in all shapes and sizes. Here are a wide variety of pictures. One strain of microalgae might genetically be as different from another as humans are from, say, cats. Algae, as single-celled organisms, literally grow at an exponential rate. If we had one pound of algae today, in seven days' time, we would have 50 pounds of algae. Anything that grows that fast is a useful, renewable resource. Algae can be grown in a wide variety of different ways. For instance, a closed container feeding sugar as a carbon source can produce algae that are chock full of nutritional supplements, things that are worth thousands of dollars per pound. Another method of growing algae would be in open raceway ponds or farms, like the photo. In this case, the algae consumes CO2 as a carbon source from the air. And with the sun's light and photosynthesis, they can make oils that are useful for biofuels as well as high-protein animal feeds. When algae grow in a pond, we need to harvest them, just like any crop. One method is flocculation, where the algae cells are clumped together into flocks and float up to the top or sink down to the bottom, as you can see in this photo, in the dark green. Another method of harvesting is using a centrifuge, where high-speed rotation literally spins the algae and the water apart. You can see an algae paste on the inside of this bowl, which has a consistency similar to a squeeze bottle of mustard. If the algae that we harvested there were dry, we would be able to use classic technologies like an oil mill or a seed press or even traditional solvent distillation in order to get the oil away from the algae. Those techniques are hundreds of years old. But the intracellular water inside those algae cells is difficult to remove. So my laboratory research is trying to get those lipids, the oils, the energy-dense hydrocarbons away from the rest of the algae biomass the carbs and proteins, while still in the presence of water. We can use thermochemical processes to upgrade algae into more useful compounds. A couple of those processes listed here are used in traditional petroleum refining, but can be applied to renewable algae biofuels um, processing. Various processes can also be applied with separations and cooperation. Some processes make products like biodiesel directly. Other processes can use algae biomass as a renewable feedstock to produce products we already make, like hydrocarbons of gasoline, jet fuel, and diesel. Currently, the largest biofuel operation of algae is the Green Crude Farm by Sapphire Energy. They just signed their first contract to sell two barrels of algae oil per day to Tesoro, the refinery. For scale, Tesoro's total refining capacity is 675,000, and the U.S. consumes 19 million, so there's room for growth. In November, uh, 
Propel Fuels and Solazyme had the first trial to have algae biofuels available at a retail pump. And just this month, the Intel Science Talent Search awarded their top prize in $100,000 to a 17-year-old for optimizing algae biofuels. Algae has an amazing potential as a biofuel. Research is happening around the world and around the country, including labs and startups right here in Baltimore. R&D can lead to technical advances, but we really need citizens like yourselves to support and demand clean, sustainable choices. Thanks very much.